Hello YouTube, my name is Jeff and today I'm going to be doing my first ever YouTube video. Um, I'm going to be showing off a car that I made. I made it extraordinarily stable. It's the most stable car I've built. Uh, I've built a good number of cars in Scrap Mechanic, but uh, oftentimes they're too powerful if you crank the engine up all the way. They just want to flip constantly. And uh, I think I finally solved that issue. Now I've seen a lot of cool vehicles that people have built. Uh, a lot of them are like, they look amazing, but they don't actually operate that great. And so what I'm trying to do with this car is make it operate great, not necessarily be pretty. So let me show you what it looks like. Oh yeah, look at that ugly thing. Looks terrible, doesn't it? Let me tell you something, it works great. And it looks a little better if you remove the lift. There we go. That's better. Look at that. Alright, well, first I'm going to give you a nice little demo, and then I'm going to show you how I built it. So here we go. I have the engine turned all the way up and I'm just flooring it. And it does. It does not flip. And it does cover too easily. Oh. Oh well that takes some skill. Can't say I've ever done this before. Can I just turn off the rock? No. Alright, well I will be back in just a second. Oh, nifty, I can just grab it. Alright, so, it doesn't often flip, but it does sometimes get stuck in trees. Um, anyways, yeah, it's super stable. But it is admit does admittedly ride a little low. And that's okay, because you can... You know, oh, I actually high timing. Perfect timing. You can actually adjust the ride height a little bit. Ride back off. Alright, let's get back over to my pad here. Actually, let's go to another pad. Yeah, it's a little less stable when you increase the ride height, but the purpose isn't to be stable, it's to get yourself a little extra. Anyways, I am going to park this beast, get out, and show you how to build it. Uh, let me sit on my bar real quick. I need I got bearings. I need an engine. Oh, rockets are be last. All right, here we go. I'm gonna start the engine. Now, what I love about this game is just how easy it is to build. Like it doesn't it doesn't take half as much effort as some other games have taken. Um, oh, here's something cool. Uh, this is what I've been doing to kind of save space in some of my builds. I've actually been using the engine as something I can build on instead of just sitting on top of my ride. And uh, it saves a little bit of space, not a whole lot, but it if you're building like a smaller vehicle like I am, then it does help. So... <coughs> So I'm doing it. I'm sticking with it. I don't know if anyone else has done it, but it works for me. No, I need some engine. I think I don't need engines anymore. And that is the wrong suspension. You know, I haven't tried it with the short suspension yet. It seems like it would be a good idea, but I've just, I just haven't. Honestly, I like the vehicle so much, I almost feel bad changing anything about it. But, uh, I don't know. It sounds kind of sentimental for me, honestly, but that's alright. Uh, I need a pipe join. 
now. Now, I almost always forget to put the pipe joint. I almost always put an elbow instead. But what you need here is a pipe joint. Because we're, instead of mounting the rockets on the vehicle itself, we mount them at the wheels so it keeps the wheels down better. And it'll adjust with the wheels when the angle go when you angle it. Obviously, there's a lot of angles in this vehicle, so you'll need it. Uh, bearings for steering. I'm a fan of big wheels, so big wheels it is. It doesn't like big wheels. Alright. Well, it's coming along pretty well, so let me just drop it down and we're going to start doing the controller stuff. Alright. Whenever I do these controllers, I always like to connect similar bearings together. If they're going to be doing the same thing. That way they're all grouped together in the controller page. So, yeah, so on the controller page, they'll all be grouped together. Now, I like to do mine so the blue arrow is the first adjustment. So I'm going to be adjusting these outwards to 75 degrees. So I want them to be rotating so that the suspension will be over here. And then all these ones need to be in the opposite direction. That one's backwards and that one's backwards. Yep, so these ones are pointed outwards, blue arrow, and then these ones are pointed inwards, the blue arrow. And then I'll do a little nice little setup. I like to start with 75 degrees. Oops, 75 degrees. See, this is the benefit of having them all grouped together. I don't have to search through numbers, look for numbers, none of that crap. Um, and then these ones are going to adjust... Uh, 30 degrees, which will put it at a 45 degree angle because it's basically 75 minus 30 to equal 45. Now for the adjustment, I usually move these back 15 degrees to so it'll be at 60 actually. And then I usually leave these ones alone. You can adjust them if you want, um, but they'll move back 15 degrees with the uh, with the outer or sorry upper bearings so it'll actually be instead of being a 45 degree angle it'll be a 30 degree angle all right now I'm gonna connect up my seats to everything I need first things first do it to the engine so I don't forget later on oh that that was the wrong thing so I don't forget later on and uh, the car drives off on me that's happened to me more times than I'd like to admit but Let's not talk about that. All right, we'll make sure all these are pointing in the right direction. Now, I've noticed whenever you're doing steering that you want these arrows to be going clockwise. So these ones are backwards, which means the back are good. So, yeah, because they're going counterclockwise. They need to be turning in the opposite direction as the front. So next we'll hook up the engine to the wheels. And before I forget, because I always do, let's turn on the engine and connect up the rest of the wheels, fix the ones that are backwards, and place our switches, switch, switch, got some switchcraft going on here, alright, uh, now I need my rockets, I don't need a seat anymore, so I'm going to do away with the seat, I'm gonna move this down, that's not a rocket. The reason I always do the controller first is for the obvious reasons of these rockets are in the way. It's really hard to get to and you have to come back over here or lift it up in order to get to it. It's just it's just not convenient, so it's it's more convenient to put on the rockets last. Alright, and now we're gonna hook up our switches. We got one and two. I like to have one as the down first. I like to have one as the down force. So I'm going to connect one to the rocket, and then I'm going to connect two to the controller, and that'll be our ride height adjustment. So now I'm going to delete the lift. It should be good to go. All right, let's head it out. 
to where it needs to be. And that looks right. There you go. Let me hop on it and I'm take it for a little test drive. Yeah, that works. That works. Let's see. Our tires are at that 45 degree angle that I was telling you about. And when I hit it, it actually goes up to 30. And this is the suspension so the suspension is at a 60 degree angle and the tires are at a 30 degree angle from the ground. That's 30 degrees. Right? Right. Well, not from the ground, but from if they were straight up. If the tires were straight up. Anyways, and that's this nice little vehicle, so I'm just gonna kind of leave the video there and hopefully y'all liked it. Hopefully y'all like this ride. Maybe you can use some of these concepts in your next vehicle, like the uh, angled suspension. It works out great in the angled wheels to keep you from flipping. Or even the downforce if you haven't tried that out just yet. Downforce is really great, honestly, especially when you put it at the tires versus on the vehicle itself because that just keeps you that much more stable. It keeps the tires on the ground that much more, just like having an actual suspension. Anyways, YouTube, y'all have a good one, and good night.